Welcome to Unity with Heaven. My name is Joseph and today I want to talk about the process of the court. Now you can go into the court and bring any aspect of your own life into the court. You can make a petition before the Lord, doesn't matter what it is, and the Lord will hear your petition. Of course the accuser will there, uh, be there to resist you, but it's as simple as just showing up and repenting and humbling yourself in that court and then the Lord puts on uh, a white a rope on you and he puts a new crown on you he established you as holy with authority and you can make your petition and the lord will grant you your petition that's an amazing thing about the court now not only can you bring uh, into the court uh, aspect of your own life but you can actually come into the court with a request about a family member or a friend of yours and you can bring them with you into the court. You could even bring your city or your nation, an election, a government into the court of heaven and the Lord will listen to that. As long as you decide, well, I'm here to represent this entity. When you come into the court, you can overcome the devil and you can decree what should happen. Really, in a court, the Lord gives you a position where you can actually influence and exercise authority both in the spirit and in the natural realm. It's an amazing place. You do not stand here in a natural on earth and pray. You do it in the spirit, in a court, before the living God. The court is where judgment is decreed, where judgment is released, and where the elders sit and bring judgment to decree that the righteous rule will prevail. The courtroom is also a place where angels are released on assignment to fulfill the purpose that God has called them to do and also to assist the saints to fulfill their blueprints. And so many times we sons and daughters of God come before the court and I make a petition and then the Lord um, directs them to go to the court of scribes and the court of angels where they can rest the, the, the scroll and the verdict that the Lord has released over their life and then they direct it to the court of angels. Now when uh, the believer comes in the court of angels uh, then there's specific angels that are being assigned to you to help you to fulfill that verdict that the Father has spoken of your life. And so that all happens in the realm of the Spirit. That all happens uh, in that court. And so when you are here on the earth, on your natural, and you play, pray, then you miss out on all those benefits and all of that infrastructure that the Lord already made available to you. Remember, God is a spirit being, and you are a spirit being. Why on earth would He make the court of heaven on the earth as a natural thing he is spirit the devils are spirit uh, angels are spirit you are a spirit it is natural uh, it's a natural order for all of those assignments uh, and all of those decrees all those scrolls all those resources to be released in the spirit realm and then to manifest in the natural realm even if you function as an intercessor it's very important for you to realize that as an intercessor, the courtroom becomes a central place for, uh, from where you will operate. You know, many intercessors will be there at their, ho their house and they'll be on their knees and they will pray and they won't even look into the realm of the Spirit to see what's happening because they feel with a repetition of words uh, they're going to have their prayers heard. But that's not actually how it works. Everything in the realm of the Spirit is according to a set of rules and is according to a legal judgment. And so there's legal rules in the, this realm of the spirit now when you enter into the courts of heaven then you have all the advantages of a righteous judge your father on the throne and jesus being your advocate and then there's really no way how the enemy can still stand against you and so that's why i want to encourage you as an intercessor get to know and get familiar with the courts and to operate from the courts of heaven okay so right now i want to give you a step by step rundown of the steps how to function in the court of heaven all right so uh, you might want to get your piece of paper out and just make a note i'll also on the side of the screen uh, put notes for you so that you can also have them in writing in front of you all right so the first one is enter into the courts and so the the technology that you will use is that jesus is your gate into the realm of the spirit and then secondly that the thanksgiving gets you through the gate and praise gets you into the court so that's your first step and that's from uh, Psalm chapter 100 uh, verse uh, 4. Is uh, you know, uh, thanksgiving through the gate 
price into the court. Okay, step number two. You have to present yourself in the court. So in Job chapter 1 verse 6, we see there that the sons of God came and they presented themselves. You know, so uh, say to the Lord, Lord, I present myself before your court. That was step number two. Okay, so now let's look at step number three. Present an issue of your life that you wrestle with. So each one of us has issues in our life. And so choose one that you feel, okay, this is the first issue that I want to get sorted in my life. And then present that issue before the Lord and make a petition to him and say, Lord, can you please help me with this request? Okay, so that was number three. Number four, now the devil will accuse you. So the moment you make your petition, then the devil says, hey, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Uh, that petition cannot stand because this is the sin in that person's life. This is the sin in that person's bloodline. And so that is fine. That is the next thing that has to happen. It's actually a good thing because the moment the devil accuses you, then he actually showing his ammunition and his evidence, uh, his weapon that he has against you. He shows that and then that gives you an opportunity to deal with it. Okay, so number five, agree with the accusation and confess your sin. Okay, so when the devil said, this is what you did or even what your father or your grandfather did, just says, yes, Lord, I've done that stuff. I'm guilty, you know, and even if your your grandfather's already dead, don't confess and say, oh, my grandfather did it. I confess that my grandfather did it. No, it's your, in your bloodline, it's written in your DNA. So in essence, you've done it, even you, uh, uh, even though you uh, were not alive yet. So what do you do? You just say, well, Lord, I've done that stuff. In my bloodline, it's written in my DNA. I'm guilty of that. I confess that as a sin in my life. The next step is number six would be to watch how Jesus deal with that issue. And what Jesus in essence will do, he will come and he'll wash you clean from that accusation. With the blood of Jesus, he'll wash you clean. Point number seven, God will now issue you with a release paper. And so that's just a document to say those accusations that the enemy is bringing against you is not standing anymore. You are free and clear of them. And so he literally actually takes the documents from the devil and say, you can't use these against my child anymore and then the lord issues you with this release paper now some people call it a divorce paper i like to call it a release paper now it's your chance to start to declare now what i typically would do i would pray over it i would shout over it i would declare god's word over that issue uh, that uh, i've made my petition uh, before the lord i would uh, declare before god that i'm dying to myself and the flesh in me that don't want to cooperate with god and i will also declare the defeat of the devil once you made your declaration now you can start to dance and shout before the lord and praise him and just sing a song of praise before the lord and this is kind of like the little interlude after you made your petition before god gives you the verdict just dance before him and praise him and just shout his name this is very similar to when uh, joshua and the israelites went to jericho remember god already told them i'm giving jericho to you but they had to go there they had to shout they had to see the walls uh, fall down and so that's your time to then step out in faith and to start to shout you know what actually happens when we shout we actually put the court of god into action step number 10 now the lord will release a verdict over your life and usually the angels would come they would give you scrolls uh, of new things that god is going to do in your life and so what you want to do is you want to read those scrolls and that verdict that God is giving to you and then declare it out loud with your mouth what God is going to do and then put that inside of you. You know in the Bible it talks about that John actually ate the scroll. So you eat the scroll or you receive the scroll in your innermost being. And then typically as a son of God you would go back to your throne and you would sit on a throne and you would declare from your throne that verdict that the Lord has given you. That scrolls are things that God has written on your blueprint and because of the sin and accusations against you and also your level of uh, spiritual maturity those scrolls couldn't be released to you because you went into the courts and you repented now the lord says okay you're ready the accusations is gone i can release those scrolls to you and then the lord will also release with those scrolls angels and supply to you that's an amazing thing so usually when you're in a court and you see angels bring scrolls and you know you three through you you won the victory and that's kind of like a big sign dealing with legal rights that the enemy has against us and that's done not in a warfare trying to fight against them but to use the the judge to give us a verdict that gives us authority to use that verdict to put those things that may be coming against us into the right place 
No. Uh, Jesus talked about the judge. You know, he talked about the kingdom in a in a judicial sense rather than a warfare sense. And he talked about getting a verdict from the judge in 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 some of the stories he told and some of the things he taught. Um, so when you look at why does something have any access to our lives, um, you have to find out what legally they use to give them access and then deal with that thing. So if it's a legal access, then you deal with it in a legal sense. That's why using a courtroom and using a, a judicial process works. Um, now, I'm not saying that's the be all and end all and the, everything's about a court system because it isn't. And even when you get a verdict, if you don't apply the verdict, then it's not going to work for you. You know, in a sense, you have to apply that verdict and put your trust in the verdict rather than anything that the enemy might be doing to attack you. And quite often people think it's automatic. Oh, great, I got a verdict, they'll stop. They won't unless you actually have that verdict as part of your mindset and belief system that makes it impossible for them to attack you because they have no authority to do so other than what you give them. And if you don't trust in the verdict, then you give them authority. That's how it works. And there's contempt of court in any uh, normal even earthly sense someone may have a, a let's say they have an injunction um, taken out against someone so someone can't come close to them or whatever it might be um, well if that person breaks that injunction or breaks that court order you have to then go to the police to say i have a court order they've broken it if you don't do anything well they'll just they'll just carry on doing what they did so you've got to apply it and you've got to use the authority that it gives to make sure the judgment is being uh, adhered to. Now, when you know that you know what Jesus said, I mean, that what Jesus said in the thing you spoke there was amazing, it's brilliant. But if that's just words on a piece of paper and not actually part of your belief system, then words on a piece of paper won't have an awful lot of effect unless you apply them. And to apply them, you've got to believe them. And so then you take that. And then if any sort of sense, let's say oppression came or any sense of thing came against you and you felt the symptoms, then you would use what you know and stand and resist and use that to say, get lost. You have no authority here. You can't attack me any longer. I'm not allowing you to anymore. So I think when people first got this teaching, it sort of was presented in such a way that some people thought it was just an automatic thing. I do a court case, great, everything will be wonderful. Well, sometimes it might happen like that, um, particularly if there were like blockages to something happening and then you do the court case and then the blockage gets removed and then what you're looking for happens. But if you're looking to deal with things, particularly who are against you or coming against you or attacking you, then you've got to maintain that position that is firm, not swaying. Double-minded person is unstable. And instability means you can be blown around by the things that come. So it is making sure that you know the truth and that what Jesus said is the truth. So the truth can set you free, but it's the truth you know, not just the truth. And to know means personal experience of not just intellectual knowledge of. So personal experiences that gets outworked in testimony in your life, and then you apply it and apply it and apply it until eventually, essentially, those things just give up because there's no room for them to have any way in your life. And I sometimes applied things quite a few times initially um, until <clears throat> I knew, they knew that I believed in that verdict and that verdict applied to my life so they, they gave up now i don't use the mobile court an awful lot now because i used it to deal with a lot of things in my life and now those things are no longer there therefore i don't really use it in that way much you know but i know how to use it and if the if there was a requirement to do so i could but you've got to know how to use it when to use it and when not to use it 
And there are certain things you can't take a person to the court or what someone is doing to you to the court and force them not to do it because that's controlling them. This is against the enemy that uses legal rights against you. A person has free choice. And if they choose, then you have to do deal with that differently. So you can look at, well, if there's something behind what they're doing, and that might be spiritually di a dynamic, then you can deal with the spiritual dynamic, which may be influencing them, but you can't force them not to do something or to do something because that's control. Uh, and the court can't be used to punish somebody or to do anything like that because that's not what it's for. And I heard lots of stories where people were trying to use the court system to punish someone who was against them or and it was just well that's not what it's for it's not punishment it's a verdict that gives you authority and when the verdict's released then you use the authority that you have from the verdict so that I saw it being abused and misused a lot um, and you know I was um, I was in the states and doing something in the states and there were a, a group that I engaged with and was teaching this. And then they sort of shared how someone else was using that sort of way of doing it. And I asked, well, what are they doing? And they told me that they were taking people and they were demanding God punish those people and whatever. And I just thought, they're not even in the right court. I don't know what court they're in, but they're not in God's court because God will not do that. So we've got to be careful that we're using it correctly in the right way and not using it to try and control people. You know, I've had situations in, in the last year where I would love to have changed someone and changed what they wanted to do and changed what they decided to do. And I couldn't, I could, you know, and I couldn't ask God to change them either because you can't ask God to change somebody's mind because <laughs> it's their mind. You know, and that's that's part of the problem. I think we think prayer, you know, and some people, why you, do you do this? Well, because praying and asking God to do something is what you do when you're a baby. You ask your parents to do everything for you, but then your parents will hopefully teach you how to do things and you'll learn how to do things and then you'll do things for yourself. So. If I keep going to God and ask, oh, God, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you can you stop those people attacking me? Can you stop the enemy attacking me? He'll say, well, there's a legal right for the enemy to attack you. You need to deal with the legal right. He won't just change the thing because I ask him to when there's a process to go through. Now, God is gracious and he's merciful and he's kind and he's loving and he'll help us a lot in these things. But he wants us to mature so that we're able to know our identity, know our authority and exercise it as sons. We're talking about the process of the court. And so now I just want to go through the different steps that a court case will go through. So step number one is to enter into the court. Now, of course, um, I've talked about it before. Uh, we step through Jesus as our first love and he will take us to the court. We will go through the gate of the father uh, with thanksgiving and then we will enter into the court with praise now a secret for me to enter into the court is to shout before the lord and to shout his praises and to shout in the decree uh, the goodness of god and the testimony of what he has done what he is doing and what he is going to do uh, and just to decree the victory uh, that we have at the court of heaven and the victory that we have in the lord jesus christ and so i want to encourage you it's important for you to have a long shot uh, to push through push through the flesh and into the spirit and that's why a two or a three minute shot is usually uh, good enough to get you through a 30 second shot is just too short it doesn't really work that well okay so uh, this is very very important now uh, to increase the level of authority and anointing and glory that is on that whole process of entering into the court it sometimes helps when you get other believers to go with you into the court and so many times when i would go into the court i would five or six people with me and we all be shouting and dancing before the lord in order to enter in so that when we are in the court of heaven then we, we are more than one person that can see and can bring understanding of what is actually happening and so it is actually easier to do courts with more uh, than one person but i want to encourage you 
do a shout before the Lord, a shout of praise to enter into the court. Step two would be to step into that court and then in your imagination to look around in a court and see what you see. So typically you would see the Father sit in front of you on his judgment seat. You would see Jesus on your right hand side and he is there to be your advocate, to support you, to help you and to represent you in this case. Um, and then you would see all these uh, angels that are on the left and the right of the Father. Uh, there might be a cloud of witnesses, specific people. Uh, you know, that you might recognize. Uh, I, for a long time, have seen Enoch in court cases that I went in. He just sat there and sometimes he spoke, but most of the time he was just there. Uh, and then, obviously, on your left side, you're going to see uh, that accusation uh, desk where the, the devil is sitting and he's really there. Uh, to accuse you so in the beginning when i start going to the court i always saw uh, the accusing uh, the accusation bends uh, on my right hand side and then at one stage my courtroom changed uh, i i did the yacht i for a very long time and i saw an eagle move me from a very small court to a bigger court and then uh, the next court that i went in it was kind of set up a little bit differently um, and in this case, then, uh, the accuser was on the left side. So I actually went and I looked online to see how is it all situated. And I see in most of the courts, the accuser is actually on the left side and the defense is actually usually on the right hand side. Doesn't matter. Uh, just uh, when you go into the court, make sure that you use your imagination uh, to receive information from your spirit man so that you can actually see what is happening in a courtroom and how does it look like and that's going to help you uh, to complete and to fulfill the whole process there in a the court step three for me would then to be to present your your issue in your petition before the lord and so usually i would do a prayer i would say to the lord lord this is my petition that i have this is my request that i have before you and then i would start to decree the word of god and what he has said in the scripture what he has prophesied over my life what's the promises what he has written on my blueprint about that specific particular issue and that kind of um empowers uh, that word that petition and to say okay well there's evidence there's actually a foundation uh, for this petition i'm making uh, for me to be able to receive that what ian clayton did he really encouraged us to shout and decree over that petition so once you presented your petition to the father then start to shout uh, the glory of god uh, shout uh, the word of god the decrees of god and victory over that issue and also to shout that the devil will be defeated and that the sons of god will be victorious and that i will fulfill what god has spoken over my life a good strategy would be to shout and to thank and to praise god for at least a a, a solid full minute just jump up and down and shout and decree uh, the victory that the lord is giving you over that situation what you actually want to do is you want to decree a victory over that chosen area of your life all right so let's say you you brought a, a area of your life before the lord and you take that area and you start to shout and you thank the lord you decree the victory and you declare that god is alive that he is well able uh, to fulfill what he has said he would do and that th that you will be victorious over that area uh, of which you made the petition now once you shout it then it's usually a good time then to uh, be quiet uh, i would many times have a pad and a pen so that i can write down what god says and then i would carefully sit and i would listen to the decree that the lord will make so you know at the end of every uh, court case there's usually a verdict uh, where the judge will make a pronouncement and so that's what you want to listen for and write it down many times what i see is actually angels that walk into the courtroom with scrolls and those scrolls is things that god said i can do but they were withheld from me because of sin in my life or because of accusations against me and then the father would take those scrolls and he would give it to me i would eat them i would put them on the inside of me and he would make a decree and as god makes a decree i would write those decrees down so that i can go back then in the future and then decree them continually over my life 
usually what I see happens, if there was an accusation, I would just there and then uh, repent of it, I would confess it as sin, and then Jesus would take that accusation from the enemy, and he would actually wash it clean by his blood. <clears throat> I've also seen him take that document and then burn it, and destroy it completely, and then just make it a clear declaration to say um, that, uh, that I'm washed clean by the blood of Jesus, and that that accusation cannot stand anymore. Finally, I want to encourage you, practice to go into the court and come out of the court regularly. You know, in the beginning, every single day, go into the court, come out, go into the court, come out. And the faster and the more you do it, uh, the more you effective you're going to become in the court. And also, the more you're going to see clearly in the realm of the spirit of what is actually happening in your court case. Now, many people want to, on the very first day when I go into the courts of heaven, they want to bring their nation or they want to bring some massive issue into the courts now in the bible it says first in jerusalem and then in judea and then samaria and then the outer parts of the earth and so jerusalem is a representation of your own personal life and so i would suggest anything in your life that is an issue that you have a petition for first make a list of those things and take one at a time and go into the courts many many times and deal with every issue in your life if there's sin if there's accusations because of that issue repent of those and then see how the lord wash you clean from those accusations put the white rope on you put the crown on you and then ask the lord for your petition and then decree it for that minute shout uh, decree victory uh, and also the testimony of what god has spoken over your life about that decree and then wait for the verdict and write the verdict down and then declare the verdict of your own life regularly now once you dealt with the issues and you own life now you can go to judea so that means you're going to take your brother your sister your wife your child your mom and dad into the courts with you and you guys going to practice that together until you went through all of them and you help all of them to deal with the issues in their lives now once you did that now you can start to reach out to other people in your congregation that also wants to go into the court make sure that you talk with your pastor and you talk with spiritual leaders in your life take them with you into the court so they can see what you're doing and how the process works you can even uh, give them a teaching about the court so they can also listen and learn and do that with you and and have that uh, revelation in your, in your own life now once you have uh, experience that with friends and family and people around your life now you can bring your community or the business or the country or government into the court and you can take every time your issues to a bigger level and a bigger level now at this stage of the game you're going to see clearly in a court and you're going to understand better how the court functions because you've uh, not only learned about it but you've actually learned how to function out of personal experience in the court of heaven well, I hope this was uh, exciting for you. Uh, in the next session that I'm going to release probably tomorrow, uh, we're going to do a full activation and enter into the court of heaven. And specifically tomorrow, we're going to focus on your nation. So we're going to take your nation into the courts and we're going to make a petition before the Lord that the Lord will fulfill his blueprint that is written for your nation. I'm so excited about the courts and I hope you are also. Uh, this is something new. This is something exciting that we can learn and practice and implement in our lives now remember i'm teaching all kinds of things you know last uh, the week two weeks ago i talked about the crowns the crowns is also important you know and then i talked about friendship with the father going into the cloud that's also important so each one of these things are another tool that the lord is giving to us that we can practice and we can use so that we can grow in our walk as sons and daughters of god on this earth uh, i love and appreciate you uh, please remember to hit that uh, like and that subscribe uh, button if you haven't uh, done so. Um, God loves you very much. See you next time. There's two things in, the, in, in Daniel 7 that I still want you to, to, to explain too, too quickly. There's two expressions. The last two expressions in verse 10. The court was seated and the books were opened. Those two things. Yeah. Please talk to us about it. Yeah. The, okay, so Daniel is seeing. He is, yes. He's being allowed to see all this procedure going That's on. That's right. So as he's watching this happen, he sees the court, uh, and that's made up of God, the judge of all, the ancient of days, the angelic beings, yes. the cloud of witnesses, all these different entities uh, spirit in the spiritual realm. It says, it says the, the, the court is seated. Now, mm. in a natural, wow. when you go into a court yes. and the court is seated, that means it's ready to hear a case. Wow, that's That powerful. means it's now come to order Whoa, and it's hallelujah. ready to hear Hora the case. Ba ba so, it says the court mm. was seated and then it says the books were opened. Well, yes. see, this is where people kind of get messed up sometimes because... Yes. It, 
there are many different books in heaven. That's right. There's books of destiny. There's books of life. There's wow. books of remembrance. Yes. You know, there's prophetic books. Yes. There's books that prophets receive for nations. Yes. And all sorts of things. So there's a lot of different books in heaven. So it says books, plural. Yes. It says the court is seen, the books are why? Because the cases that are going to be presented are going to come out of those books. Wow. See, you That's can't powerful. just go to the court and do anything you want. Yes. It's, you it's, have to present cases out of the books. And that this is, is what that means. That is very powerful. You have to have a prophetic discernment of what's in those books. That is so that you can present cases in agreement with the purposes of God. God in agreement. And yes. that's what it is. So it's not a just it's not a court of heaven that is designed to save your flesh. That's it right. is designed to align you up with the purpose of God. That's right. So that is powerful. So I come and I say, okay, there's a Psalms 139, 16 it says yes. every one of us has a book in heaven. Yes. My days yet in form, my, sub, mm. my, my substance yet in form, my days yet in fashion. That's what he said. So that means my destiny, my kingdom reason for being alive. So I come and I say, okay, God, I understand prophetically this is what I'm supposed to be accomplishing. So I bring that as a case before the Lord. Yes. Now, I, I know that because the books are open. You see, this is what the people can't get. The court is seated and the books are open. That means sometimes the books are closed. Mm. Isaiah 29 yes. says that prophets wow. couldn't see and seers could not perceive. Why? It says because the books were closed. Wow. See, because prophets, in other words, there is no prophetic understanding. There is no prophetic unction if books are closed. So what opens books? What, it says the court is seated, the books are open. you got to have an open book to present a case in the Lord or in the courts. And so I tell people, I said, you, got, you, you must have done the things that you needed to do yes. to get your books open. My so God. that you can present cases about wow. yourself, about your family. That is Listen, powerful. you don't just come into the courts and tell God, Oh God, I need this, I need this, I need... No, you come into the courts and say, God, you called me to this. You made me for this. Wow. You made me to preach the gospel. You said to me, you will disciple nations. These are things I've heard. So I bring wow. that and I brought that before the courts. I say, now God, let what you have said, let that become reality because I have had a glimpse at wow. least into my book, book in heaven because it's open. Open. It's but open. see what you got you gotta know how to get those books open. Sometimes people have no prophetic understanding about their own life because they haven't got their book open yet.